Hello everyone, I am Sammy, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. For those who might not have seen my last video, or my Instagram, my cat pumpkin went missing in October, and despite all of our efforts, she still hasn't been found. So before we jump into this video, I wanted to give you guys a heads up that I'm currently focusing on releasing haul videos and other manga content that doesn't require reading. I haven't read anything since Pumpkin went missing. She always cuddled me while I read, so I'm reminded of her every time I pick up a manga. It's still really painful and I just don't want to force it. Also, I need to give a huge thank you to everyone who's reached out to me with such lovely and caring messages. Your kindness meant the world to me and it really lifted me up when I needed it, so thank you. Now, before my hiatus, I was taking part in the Manga Freakathon, which was hosted by Bizarre Individual and Marg Reads Manga. So huge thank you to them for putting on such an awesome event. It was so much fun, and I even got a bingo on the Freakathon bingo board, which I was not expecting. I'm not sure how I managed that. I'll definitely be participating again next year, and I'm just really eager to share my thoughts on everything I read, so I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice, and let's talk manga. Hey guys, Editor Sammy here. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up before we jump into the video. I'm currently editing the footage from the video and I've noticed that the furnace is pretty loud in the background. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up that I am investing in a lapel mic. I've decided. <laughs> but I hope this video isn't too distracting. I hope you enjoy it and I am happy to be back. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. So the first manga I'm going to be talking about is a shoujo survival horror series, which is a demographic and genre you don't usually see paired together, and that is The Limit by Keiko Suenobu. This series was a highly anticipated read on my TBR, as I had read the first volume years ago and I absolutely loved it. It took me a while to collect the rest of the books, but I'm really glad that I did because I feel like this is one of the better short series that I've read. The story follows a group of five girls who find themselves stranded in the wilderness after a disaster and they must try to survive until help arrives. What seems like a manageable, albeit traumatic situation, turns nightmarish as the flawed high schoolers find themselves trapped in a Lord of the Rings meets Mean Girls type scenario. <laughs> the stress of the situation, plus years of suppressed anger over being ostracized and bullied, pushes some characters to their limits, and they'll do anything to feel in control, even if those measures objectively harm their chances of surviving. First off, I'm very thankful that I had the entire series on hand when I started reading this, because I ended up binging all six volumes in one day. It sort of reads like a thriller, so it's quick paced and it has that addictive quality. The story is extremely compelling. It does an excellent job of building tension, suspense, and a sense of terror. And I thought the plot twists were intense, but I'll add that I don't read much horror. So a seasoned horror reader might find them more predictable, but I was surprised for the most part. While survival is a major theme in The Limit, 
it's clear that Tsunobu Sensei is trying to highlight the fragility and pointlessness of high school social hierarchies, as well as the negative impact bullying has on the victims. The bullying in this series isn't as extreme as it is in Tsunobu Sensei's other work, Life, but it still stresses the seriousness of bullying and how casual cruelty, cruelty, cruel, cruelty, cruelty, that's not right. Casual cruelty can build up over time and eventually overwhelm someone. When it comes to the characters, I admire the complexity and development of the cast. I liked how everyone was neither wholly good or bad. Their upbringing influenced their actions and I found myself understanding certain characters that I disliked at the beginning of the series after exploring their backstories. It was interesting seeing the different dynamics between characters and watching them interact after the niceties and social structures of their high school life had collapsed, especially since they come from different levels of the social ladder. Also, I thought the psychological aspects were very interesting. Seeing characters question their sanity and struggle with paranoia was very compelling. I think my only gripe with the series is that I wanted more. I would have loved to explore the characters further and I thought the ending was a little rushed. I think one or two more volumes would have really helped flesh everything out. Also, I occasionally found that the series does sometimes border on melodrama and isn't always subtle with its messaging, but ultimately I thought the story and the characters were well crafted. I thought Suenobu Sensei's artwork was extremely expressive. She's really skilled at drawing facial expressions that convey intense emotions like fear, depression, and rage. Her backgrounds are both realistic and detailed, and there is a visceral quality to some of the scenes as well. The series is also rated 13+, plus, which surprised me as I would have guessed that it was rated 16+, plus, since it includes illustrations of death and some mild gore, so just a warning for people who find those things triggering. Despite its flaws, I think The Limit was a good little thriller. I liked how the characters slowly grew on me and that exhilarating feeling of needing to know what happens next. Another thing that I find impressive is that this is an older shoujo. It was released in English in 2013, and surprisingly, I think it's aged pretty well. I've decided to give this series four stars and definitely recommend it to people who are fans of survival stories and manga that explores dark psychological issues. Speaking of dark, psychological issues. <laughs> Up next, I need to talk about volumes 9 through 11 of Blood on the Tracks by Shuza Oshimi. I've been following this series closely and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know this is one of my favorite ongoing seinen series at the moment. For those of you who don't know the premise of the story, Blood on the Tracks follows an extremely unhealthy relationship between a mother and her 13-year-old son, and his name is Seichi. It dives into the psychological terrors of having a manipulative and gaslighting parent and illustrates how the abuse can affect a child mentally and emotionally. I can't say too much about the story because I don't want to spoil it, but things have taken a turn that I wasn't quite expecting. And that's one of the things that Oshimi Sensei does really, really well with Blood on the Tracks. He introduces these sudden and unexpected twists. His work isn't tropey and always manages to surprise me. After finishing volume 11, I felt like the story was starting to build towards the final act of this series, but then, I saw that at the time of volume 13's release in Japan, Oshimi Sensei tweeted, and I quote, with this volume, the splendid prologue ends and the main story starts. Are you telling me the first 13 volumes 
of Blood on the Tracks is just the prologue? What does Shuzo Oshimi have in store for us? I can't even imagine. Furthermore, from the covers of volumes 13 and 14, I'm guessing we're getting a time jump at some point and I'm eager slash terrified to see how everything is going to play out. Also, I adore the covers of those books. The blue is such a contrast from this bright red color, and I could be reading into this, but I feel like the dark blue could be a metaphor for Seichi sinking into the depths of madness and despair. I feel so bad for him. His life is truly horrific, and I just get this feeling that it's only going to get worse from here. As always, Oshimi Sensei's illustrations are exceptional. His ability to express raw emotion through characters' faces is just unmatched, and the visceral horror conveyed in his art is unnerving and often makes me feel deeply uncomfortable, sometimes even sick to my stomach. This series continues to be a five-star read for me. It never fails to disappoint. Also, I'm impressed by Vertical's release schedule. I feel like I'm never waiting long for the next installment, which is appreciated since these books are very quick reads. I'm really eager to find out what happens next, and if you can handle the triggering content, I 110% recommend that you pick this up. The last manga series that I need to talk about this month is one that I started reading because it actually won a poll on my channel, and that's volumes 1 through 5 of the Shonen series The Girl from the Other Side, Shula Rune by Nagabe. This manga is published by Seven Seas Entertainment and is completed in English at 11 volumes. Although I wasn't able to finish it in October, I was very impressed with what I read. The Girl from the Other Side is a gothic fantasy series set in the world or set in a world where a mysterious curse is plaguing and dividing the realm. The uncursed people, they live in safety and in peace on the inside, while cursed beasts roam freely on the outside. The story follows a human girl named Shiva who has befriended a gentle and surprisingly well-mannered outsider, and she's nicknamed him Teacher. After finding Shiva abandoned in the woods, Teacher takes on the role as guardian to the girl and is determined to protect her. However, both Shiva and Teacher must be careful as the curse can be passed with a simple touch. This is a hauntingly beautiful story about mutual trust and companionship. It has very sweet slice of life storytelling where our main characters have tea parties and big pies, but there's also a dark side to this fairy tale. It isn't afraid to explore the grim parts of life and can be quite tense and heartbreaking at times. So far, I've really enjoyed the lore and the world building. It's really fascinating and spooky. Also, I'm very intrigued by the mystery of Shiva's origins and what purpose or role she serves to both the insiders and the outsiders. Now, this isn't really a critique, but I thought it was worth mentioning. The plot is very slow moving and the story can be frustratingly vague at times, but I think this is done deliberately to build up the suspense of the overarching plot. If I didn't have the whole series at my disposal, I might be more annoyed, but so far I've taken pleasure in watching things unravel little by little alongside our characters. I really adore the main protagonists in this story. Our little heroine, Shiva, is absolutely delightful and a very strong child character. I feel like Nagabe Sensei really understands children and their psychology because Shiva feels authentic and even reminds me of my own five-year-old daughter. Like most children her age, Shiva is naive and trusting. She's also strong-willed and doesn't hold back asking questions or speaking her mind. Additionally, 
I like that Shiva isn't bratty or annoying, but she's still childish, which can be a difficult balance in writing sometimes. I'm also very fond of Teacher's character. He's kind and playful and protective, and I love how his bond with Shiva is reflective of a relationship between a, between a parent and their child. Their interactions are just so wholesome, and watching them develop and learn from each other, it just really warms my heart. The pen and ink artwork is gorgeous, it's stunning, it's intricate yet simple, and I adore the use of black and white. Additionally, Nagabe Sensei's art style is excellent at setting the mood and delivers a very chilling but also charming and tender atmosphere. To wrap it all up, The Girl from the Other Side is a mysterious and somewhat macabre fairy tale, but remains sweet and emotional at its core. I'm rating these first five volumes five stars. I urge anyone who enjoys quiet, whimsical stories featuring cryptic mysteries and horror elements to check this out. Lastly, if you do decide to pick this up, I highly recommend you grab the hardcover Omnibus Editions. They are stunning, and if I didn't already own the series, I would be buying those handsome editions in a heartbeat. And that's everything that I read in October. I'd love to hear what you guys have been reading lately, so make sure to leave a comment below letting me know. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!